Hello, and welcome to the Stack Tech Bench. This is Joseph Stackhouse, and today we'll be doing a quick video tutorial on the Tiny Duino Micro SD Tiny Shield. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the Tiny Duino and programming it via the Arduino IDE. Here is the Tiny Duino board, which we are all um, familiar with by now. Very small Arduino platform. We're also going to be using the USB ICP board. And here is the SD card adapter itself. It's very tiny. Uh, it's about the same size as the USB ICP board as well as the Tiny Duino itself. I'm also going to be using a 16 gig SanDisk high capacity card. Um, you can use other cards as well, however your mileage may vary. You can use this shield to add storage to your project. If you've ever needed to log values from various sensors over time um, for later analysis or processing, uh, the Tiny Shield Micro SD, you can do that. You can do up to 32 gigs on an SDHC card. As you can see, the Tiny Shield measures approximately 20 by 20 millimeters. Um, the SD card, when inserted, which I will do now, hangs over the edge approximately three millimeters. It's real easy to uh, remove from the shield itself while it's in your project. The shield itself consumes a large amount of power while it's reading and writing and accessing the card anywhere between 100 and 200 milliamps. So your Tiny Duino system needs to have a power supply or a battery that is large enough to provide enough power. Um, the coin cell battery option that the Tiny, Tiny Duino supports um, does not have sufficient power to use this module. You'll definitely have to have some extra juice. The shield includes onboard voltage regulators and level shifters, so the system can operate between three and five volts safely with no problems. And it also uses SPI mode for communication. Uh, Arduino pins 10 and 13 are used by the shield. All of the built-in IDE examples from the Arduino IDE, um, from the SD card library, should work correctly. The only thing that we will need to change is the chip select pin, which will be pin 10 for the Tiny Shield Micro SD. I'm going to head over to the computer now. After assembling this, this is how we're going to test it today. We're going to start with the Tiny Duino itself. We're going to connect in the Tiny Duino USB ICP programming board. All right, those are attached. And then we're going to put the SD card adapter on top of the USB. So there we go, all assembled. We have our SD card inserted. I'm going to talk about, when we get over the computer, I will talk about formatting the SD card correctly. And then we will start the tutorial in the Arduino IDE. All right, now we're over at the computer. And the first thing we're going to do is format our SD card. You can use the built-in Windows program or Mac program to format your card FAT32 or FAT16, depending on the size. However, the recommended way of doing this um, is to use the SD Card Association's format utility, and I will leave a link in the description for that. If you're having an issue with your card not being able to initialize or being recognized, you will definitely want to attempt to format it using this program as it does fix some of those issues if you're having them. In my case, the Windows utility has been just fine in formatting, however, I'm going to show you the officially supported way that seems to work the best. It's pretty simple. After you get it installed, which I'm not going to show as it's very simple to install, you pick your drive letter, you pick your volume label. In this case, I've just labeled it Tiny Duino SD, and then you hit the format button. Gives you a couple warnings that your drive is going to be erased. And as you can see, we now have 14.8 gigabytes of space on my 16 gig flash drive formatted in FAT32. Before I remove the SD card from my SD card reader, I am going to create a couple demo files for the Arduino to play with. 
I'm just going to create simple text documents file1.txt, file2.txt, and file3.txt. I'm going to go ahead and edit them to give them some contents. Doesn't matter what you put in these files, just so you can tell what the contents are. And I'm also going to create an example folder. Now remember, it only supports, the library built in only supports 8.3 file names, which means you're limited to eight characters with a three character extension. This shouldn't be a problem for you, however, as we get to pick our own file names to work with. So we're just going to create a folder called Folder1. And inside of it, we're going to make another document folder1.txt. All right, now that we've got some files to play with, I'm going to go ahead and take the SD card out of my SD card reader and reinsert it into the Tiny Duino and plug the Tiny Duino into my USB cable. All right, now we're going to launch the Arduino IDE. And it's important to understand before we continue that the library that we will be using in this tutorial is the SDFAT Arduino library, which is included in the IDE. There's also a FAT16 library for smaller card sizes which can be used if you do not need that much storage space and you're looking to minimize the size of your compiled sketches. I'll leave a link for that in the description, just in case you want to try it. The SDFAT library only supports short 8.3 file names as I mentioned earlier. It supports file creation, deletion, read, write, and truncation. It supports access to subdirectories, creation and deletion of subdirectories, and I will leave a link in the description for the official GitHub repository of the SDFAT library. Even though it's included in your Arduino IDE, it may not be the latest version. As you can see here, I am using 1.0.5 R2. I'm not going to update the SDFAT library in this case. I'm going to use what's included. However, if you feel free to do that, I will put the link in the description. You can go download it and install it. All right, we're going to go to File, Examples, SD, Card Info. I'm going to scroll down in the code, and we're going to look for the integer chip select. Change it from 4 to 10 as the Tiny Shield micro SD uses chip select 10 mode to communicate. As you can see, this is a fairly simple program. It starts up serial communications, initializes the SD card, tests the speed of the SD card, and tests that it's correctly initialized. It will determine if it's SD1, SD2, SDHC, or an unknown card type. It also checks to see if it's formatted correctly, and there's a volume and partition, FAT16 or FAT32. I should mention in this specific version, 1.0.5 R2 of the XFAT library that's included with the Arduino IDE, there's a bug that will not print the correct size of your SD card. Ken Burns has sent me a correction for this, and I will also paste a link in the description um, to Pastebin where you can get the corrected code here. It simply corrects the values um, so that the free space gets computed correctly. So we're going to take that code and go ahead and overwrite the built-in code here. Now it's important to know if you update these, the SD card library yourself, you may not have this problem as it may be fixed in future versions. However, this will allow us to see the correct size. All right, my SD card is inserted into the shield. I'm going to go ahead and upload the code and we'll see what the output is. All 
All right, it's done uploading. We're going to go to Tools, Serial Monitor, make sure our baud rate is set to 9600. And as you can see, it has initialized the SD card, shows the volume type as FAT32, it shows the free space in kilobytes and megabytes, and it shows all the files that it found, as well as our folder and the file that we put inside of our folder. Now that you know that it's fairly simple to use the built-in FAT library um, in the Arduino IDE, I'm going to quickly go through some other examples. I'm not going to explain them entirely, but I'm going to show you some of the other examples. So we're going to go to examples again, SD, and we're going to do the files example. The files example code is a little messier. There's not a constant integer chip select defined, so you want to make sure you come down in here and change the pin 4 to pin 10. Again, that may be fixed in future versions of the IDE or the FAT library. Now that we have that change, let's look what this program does. It creates a file called example.txt. Looks to see if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it makes it. Deletes the file. And there's nothing in the loop because nothing happens after the setup. So it's just a quick run. Going to go ahead and compile it and upload. And again, we're going to go back to the serial monitor window. It's initializing the SD card. It finds the example file doesn't exist, so it goes ahead and creates it and then it removes it. So it's a very simple example. You won't be able to see what it has done to your SD card as it simply looks to see if it exists. If it doesn't, it creates it and then it removes it. All right, moving along, we're going to go to another example. Let's look at the list files example. In this case, it already has our pin mode 10 and our chip select pin is already correct. So we're going to go ahead and upload this sketch. Check the serial monitor and it simply lists the files on the SD card. Probably the most important example that you'll need in your projects is the data logger example. I currently do not have any sensors hooked up. However, it's fairly simple to configure. You change your chip select, you'll come down here and you'll actually define what values that you wish to log. As you can see here, it's going to three uh, analog pins, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it's actually reading the sensor values and then separating them with a comma, and then it writes them to datalog.txt. This can be useful over time if you're looking to collect some values and want to see the output later. I'm going to go back to the examples and we're going to look at the dump file example. This example actually lets you dump the contents of a file. Again, we'll change the chip select and the file that it's looking for is datalog.txt. In our case we don't have one so I'm going to go ahead and put file1.txt we put on the root of our SD card. I'm going to go ahead and upload the sketch. And if everything goes correctly, it should print out the contents of file one. All right, we're going to look at our serial monitor. And this is the contents of file one. That literally, that string right there is what I had put inside of file one.txt. So it's correctly printing out the contents of the file. 
All right, this concludes our demo tutorial of the Tiny Shield Micro SD. I hope you enjoyed this demo. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. You can also head over to tiny-circuits.com for more information. You can also find the forums there where other people um, may be able to assist you with any questions that you have. Again, this is Joe Stackhouse from Stacktech. See you next time.